Hey guys. Okay, so I was having a chat to my sister on the weekend and she said to me, you must find it really, really hard to come up with new topics and things to talk about each week in your videos. I can honestly say hand on heart, 95, maybe even 99% of the time, the stuff that we talk about in these weekly videos comes about in direct response to questions that I've been asked in site meetings and things like that in the week before, or discussions with counsel in regards to like information request responses and things like that. You gotta keep in mind, we literally do hundreds of jobs each and every year. So the volume of information, data, and questions coming across my desk each week is rather large. So it's very, very rare that I get to like the day before the Thursday when I go, so wow, uh, what are we gonna talk about today? I haven't actually got something to talk about. Normally the question has come up time and time again in the week before, and it's just the universe has been telling me that is what you're gonna talk about this week. Today's topic is exactly that. Literally every single meeting that I went to last week, I found myself talking about the snowball effect or the slippery slide effect, if you wanna call it that. So I went, you know what? That is gonna be this week's video topic. So let me sit the scene. Normally when I'm talking to people and we're talking about doing something where you're pushing the boundaries with counsel on something like the height, so the story limit or the number of meters limit, or things like demolition to rear roof forms on pre-1911 houses, things like that. People are really, really surprised when I turn around and say, yeah, so counsel's gonna take a very hard line approach on this or a very black and white approach to this. People naturally go, but I just wanna push it a little bit. I just want that little bit of three stories. Or I just wanna do that little bit of partial demolition to that rear roof form. Why won't they let me push it just a little bit? And I'm like, snowball effect. It's obvious, isn't it? <laughs> so what do I mean? And I can't believe I'm about to say this. Like I was thinking about it over lunch earlier going, what am I gonna talk about today? And this idea came to my mind and I went, oh, am I gonna go there? Yes, I'm gonna go there. So I hope I don't offend the other town planners out there. But I would liken us town planners to ibises. Please, please, please think of me more like that Brisbane Olympics mascot ibis, something that's a bit cool and a bit fun. Not so much the bin chicken ibis that's hanging out outside Suncorp Stadium in that like centre median garden area. They are disgusting. But anyway, us town planners, we're like ibises. We're always scavenging around and on the hunt for the next example to be able to use to justify our proposal. So we've always got our ears to the ground listening for people that sit there and say, oh, but I saw such and such got that approved. Or I heard council approve that down the road. We're always looking for those examples. Or on Development Eye, we're searching for examples to be able to use. Because the thing is, once we get one of those examples, we use that to justify our next job or our next case. So as an example, council might approve, let's say five square meters of a third story component somewhere. Me as a town planner or an IBIS, I'm gonna come along and go, oh, five square meters, I want six. And then the next town planner or the next IBIS is gonna come along going, six, I want 10. 10, 20, 20, 50, and it starts to snowball from there. Council knows that it is so, so, so much easier to say no to people before they start sliding down that slope or before they get up on that slippery slide as opposed to when they're halfway down the slope and they're snowballing or when they're sliding down that slope. So the further they go down that hill or the further that they go down that slippery slide, the harder it is to sort of hit the brakes and the further they get away from their intent, their original goal. So that is why council will always sit there and try and take that real hard line approach. So what do you need to do? Well, basically you need to give council a reason to explain or justify why your proposal is so different to any other town planning proposal is out there. So you need to give council a way to arm themselves against those ibises to fight off them. <laughs> I'm imagining now, I can see all the town planners running in and council fighting them off and going, stay away, bin chickens, <laughs> so bad. But anyway, work with me here. You gotta give council the reasons or the ammo to be able to say, no, you cannot compare your example to our example. That is different so that you don't get that snowball sort of effect. So I'll give you an example. One of the properties that I went out to last week was a commercial character building out at Clayfield. So we were standing there talking about the demolition work. And I was like, okay guys, I need you to give me a reason. Why do you wanna do this demolition work? Why should council support your proposal? And I don't wanna hear the usual, but it's gonna be so much easier for the builder or it's gonna be so much cheaper. Now that's construction 101. That applies to every single site across Brisbane. You need to give me some reasons which are totally unique to your property. So once I started pushing and prodding, we eventually got to the point where we realized, okay, this extension here, it's kind of structurally unsound. Those stumps, they're really rickety about to come down and there needs to be some other general repair work to the structure to be able to make it structurally sound. Now, the thing is, when you go and actually do that restumping process and the other repair work required to bring it up to structural soundness, I keep saying those words, but you know what I'm trying to get at here, basically to make it structurally sound, you're gonna trigger modern fire rating requirements. 
Now, being a commercial building, anything within three meters needs to be, or three meters of the boundary, I should say, needs to be fire rated. Kicker here is we also wanna raise the extension up so we can get some car parking in underneath because we're currently creating parking problems on the street and we wanna alleviate that problem. When you go and put cars under, under buildings, you then need to fire rate the underside of the floor. So basically where we get to is we've got to fire rate anything within three meters of the boundary and anything under on the bottom half part of the structure. The problem is there is no lightweight, really thin maintenance free products out there that we can simply slap onto the outside and slap onto the underside to make it comply with those fire rating requirements. Really, in super simple terms, the only thing we can do is put some block work on the outside. The uh, problem is this structure is sitting right on the boundary. Like, I mean, the eaves are literally hanging over the boundary. So you, you can't rip up the cladding and put something light there. You've got to put these big blocks on the outside. So that's naturally going to push us over the boundary. Boom, there you go. There's our unique factor. You are really, really going to struggle to find a property out there to compare to us, which has the structural issues, the fire rating issues, the parking issues, and the encroachment issues. Suddenly we can go back to council and go, look, this site is really, really unique. This is the reason why we need this demolition. And you can rest assured that the other Ibises out there, again, I'm going back to that image of me fighting off these Ibises, but the other Ibises out there can't go and back you into a corner and use this example if you approve it against you in the future. So you don't need to fear that snowball effect or that slippery slide effect as a, uh, as a result of going and approving our proposal. So moral of the story, <laughs> Point I want to get across today, I'm going to really struggle to get that Ibis image out of my head. But point I want to get across today is basically you need to, in addition to focusing just inwards on your own property and the immediate surrounding boundaries or neighbours, you also need to take a step back, put yourself in council shoes and think, okay, what other pressures are they under? What other considerations do they need to take into account? And how do you address those concerns and the considerations that they may have? May not be conscious concerns and considerations, sometimes it's subconscious. How do you address those so that they drop their guard and they focus on your proposal just on its merits. They don't have to fear how other proposals can use that against them, etc., etc. Okay, that covers off everything I wanted to talk about today. As I always say, until next time, thanks for watching. For all you red tape lovers out there, I have one thing to say. Well, no, actually, I've got three. Number one, the advice provided in these videos is general in nature. It's not site specific. You would be a silly billy to go and make financial decisions based on this advice without first checking with the town planner. Don't be a silly billy. Number two, Brisbane Town Planning is in no way linked to Brisbane City Council. The views expressed in these videos are my own, not council's. So if you don't like them, blame me, not council. Number three, what was my number three? Oh yeah, the views expressed in these videos are accurate at the time of recording. If you're watching this video back 10 years from now, the views may not be so accurate. That's all.